The Tower of Hanoi. It is said that after creating the world, God set on the earth three rods made of diamond and 64 rings made of gold. These rings were all different in size, the largest at the bottom and the smallest at the top, located at the source rod. God also created a monastery close by the rods. The monks which inherited this monastery had a task. Their task was to transfer all the rings from the source rod to the destination rod, using the auxiliary rod as a buffer. The only operation permitted is to move a single ring from one rod to another in such a way that no ring is ever placed on top of another smaller one. When the monks would have finished this task, the world, as it was prophesied, would come to an end. Now this might seem like a very dark tale about the world ending, but when you think about it, well the number of moves required for the monks to ever finish this task is about 2 to the power 64 and the result subtracted by 1. Now even if the monks move the rings at a speed of about 1 second at a time, it will still take them about 500,000 million years to complete the problem after they began, which is, if you might know, a long ass time. This is about 25 times the estimated age of the universe and we all know that those monks, no matter how skilled they are, would not be able to pull off that one second per shift deadline. This is how the so-called problem uh, Tower of Hanoi functions. So hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're going to learn how the code of this problem functions. For this, let's start with the code itself. It might amaze you for all I know. As you can see, the code is heavily recursive. And um, as you might have already heard, this is one of the go-to problems when you first learn about recursion, or it might as well be. I mean, look at it. It does something so complicated, yet it looks so elegant and simple. Uh, obviously, here we have the first function call, the tower function call, and then here we have the function tower, which takes in a integer variable, a character source rod, a character destination rod, and a character auxiliary rod. So here we have source, destination, and the auxiliary. First source, then destination, then the auxiliary, which is the buffer rod. And uh, here we have uh, a base case. If n is equal to equal to zero, return, and then a uh, tower n minus one. In the later part of this tutorial, I'll show you how the call stack of this tutorial works, so that you might get a better understanding. Uh, here we have the uh, print statement, which actually prints the move from this to this rod. And here we have the uh, movements again. So the, this is recursive. There are two recursive calls which happen one after the other and that's about it for the entire function. This is the entire program which actually does the whole calculations. So if you're not impressed by the code, let's look at the presentation and uh, come back to the code to judge the finale. So here we're trying to transfer not 64 but one ring from one row to the next. So in order to do that, well we just need to know our source and our destination. We place the ring on the source and see how it will reach its destination. In this case, it is pretty simple. We just take the ring from the source and put it in the destination. This might seem very trivial at first, but there is a deeper meaning hidden in it. For the most part, we are not using our auxiliary rod, as in fact, we don't need it. The best thing about this problem is that you don't need an auxiliary rod to transfer one ring, and that is what you must remember from this problem. Now let's look at how the transfer of two rings from the source to the destination takes place. Now for two rings, the method is a bit different. You put the first ring on the auxiliary rod and take the second ring and put that on the destination rod and then recursively put the first ring back on top of the second ring along with the destination rod. So this can be broken down into a bunch of steps. We are moving single rings from one rod to another as we have seen in the single ring problem. We don't need to use an auxiliary rod to move them. So what are we essentially doing is that we are breaking down the two ring problem into a one ring problem with a bunch of steps. So this essentially means that if we have like n rings, we would break it down to n minus one recursively until we eventually reach the n till one and shift that one ring. Yeah, this might be a bit convoluted to think at first, but as you get into the groove of thinking about it, it might just make sense. The thought which I want to fix in your brain is that this is a recursive problem which is divided, a divide and conquer problem even if it doesn't seem like one. And you have to in your brain imagine why I just said that. So let's get into the third ring, uh, sorry, three ring problem and fix this thought. In this three ring problem, we take the first ring and move it to the destination rod. Then we take the second ring and put it in the auxiliary rod. Till now we are just moving single rings, but in respective rods. But then we take 
the first ring and put it on top of the second ring along the auxiliary rod and then we realize that we have just moved n minus 1 rings from the source to the destination which in this case is the auxiliary rod and n is 3 and next we just move the nth ring from the source to the destination see and initiate the movement of the two remaining rings from the auxiliary rod which in this case is the source rod to the destination rod and actually source rod being the auxiliary rod we are doing this exact same steps as we did in moving a single ring and while moving two rings from the source to the destination and so there are three rings transferred so for completion's sake let's take the fourth uh, four and five ring problem see we take n minus one where n is four then we transfer the nth uh, ring and then we transfer this whole thing over there similarly in the five we take this put it over here take this put it over here. similarly when you imagine this thing can be transferred n minus one times right so you can take this as n uh, these three rings as n then you take these two as n minus one and similarly two are there then take this as n minus one so that's how you do this so for generality to move n rings from source to destination move n minus one rings from the source rod to the auxiliary rod this leaves the nth ring along the source rod move the nth ring from the source rod to the destination rod move the n minus one ring from the auxiliary rod to the destination rod so as they sit on the nth ring so that's exactly how the code runs as well so to move n ring suppose n is equal to three uh, you call the tower function with three s a, a uh, d and a you go into here tower n minus one three minus two uh, sorry three minus one is two and source rod uh, s a and d and then you print out this and then you go again uh, uh, and you call this function so basically you're going calling tower again and again until you reach zero once you reach zero you're returning to uh, the previous statement and then you're printing this out and you're going in here which will return zero obviously because the last one was one if you don't believe me here is the call stack uh, tower three two one zero print then you go to the next function tower zero a d s uh, then move the disk two from s to a one zero again so basically if you go through this call stack you'll realize that you're like um messing up the entire recursion and uh yeah that's how it works basically so to move n rings you need to move n minus one rings from the source to the auxiliary rod and to move n minus one rings you need to move n minus two rings and to move n minus two you need to move n minus three until you get to the single ring which you have to move so you can't move the single ring until you go through the entire step of moving n minus n uh, and bracket n minus one rings so that's how the recursion works now to understand this even more clearly I encourage you to execute this piece of code on a, bo on a book uh, so that the image will be fixed in your head and that's how the tower of annoy problem is solved also remember that the amount of steps needed to solve this problem is 2 to the power uh, n and the result subtracted by 1 so I hope this helped you in some way or the other uh, thanks for watching guys uh, see you later subscribe like and uh, share if you want to spread the knowledge Thanks for watching guys.